A key figure in the Porter case is the private investigator who videotaped that confession and took quite a risk in doing it. He is Chicago investigator Paul Ciolino. He joins us this afternoon. Thanks for being with us. You had never met this man before, Al Story Simon. You went to his house in Milwaukee this morning. This morning. What happened when you went in? We went into his house, an investigator that works for me and myself, and we told him we wanted to talk to him about this, the homo double homicide in Chicago in 1982. He invited us in, and he initially denied any involvement in it, saying he knew about it, he had been with the victims the day of the homicide, he was aware of it, but that he just didn't do it. And at that moment, <clears throat> almost, the network news story that you guys did last night came on, and I dragged him over in front of the TV, and I said, look, there it is. And everything I'd been telling him, he's watching on TV. And 10 minutes later, he sat down for a videotape statement, and he confessed the entire thing. What was it that made him confess after how many years has this been? 16 years? 17 years? 17 years. What was your connection to the <clears throat> case? What, what led you to this moment that made you track down this individual and get this confession? We, we, uh, I extracted a, a, the only eyewitness in the case denied making the eyewitness account some time ago, and we took that. Then I interviewed his wife, who was present at the same time of the murder. Al Story Simon's yes, wife. Yes, Inez Simon. That was about three or four days ago, along myself and Northwestern students and Dave Protus. And then we just figured we'd take a shot at this guy. We didn't have nothing to lose. Porter's life is in the balance. And what if he would talk to us? And he did. Was it hard tracking him down? He was, uh, it was a lot harder finding his wife than him. So he was pretty accessible. Anyone could find presumably him. Presumably investigators could have found him. Uh, prosecutors could have found him. If you wanted to find him, you could find him. Did, he knew that his wife had basically ratted on him. Well, he's seen it this morning on the news. So he's watching it with me on this morning's news. Do you think he'll turn himself in now? Obviously he knows you have the tape and that it's gone to the I, I authorities. Think he'll, he's ready to do the right thing. I think he's going to turn himself in, yes. And since then, since 1982, what, is he, what kind of life has he led? Been well, out of trouble with uh, the He's had a little trouble? trouble, nothing of any significance. But he's uh, led a, a pretty normal, routine life up there. He's been a, uh, a, a fix-it-up guy. He's uh, rehabbed some houses. He's managed some apartment buildings. He's had some minor run-ins with the law, but nothing of a serious nature. And he's just li lived a pretty normal life. No, it may change now. I think so. You've had quite a day. It's been a long day. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Mike Flannery brought this case to our attention last week. He joins us live now with more on this new evidence. Mike. Lester, his lawyers say that as Anthony Porter sits behind the barbed wire here at the county jail, it's not clear to them that Porter really understands what has been going on for the past 16 years, much less the past week and this past incredible day. Porter, though, has always claimed that he didn't kill anyone. A jury rejected that claim, finding him guilty, and a judge sentenced him to death row. But suddenly, Porter's claim has new credibility tonight, now that a man named Al Story Simon is saying... He's the one who killed two people in Washington Park in 1982. Before I knew anything, you know, like I just pulled it up and started shooting. Just why did Al Story Simon confess now to a 1982 double killing that put another man on death row? First, he was taken by surprise by volunteer private investigator Paul Ciolino. He showed up at Simon's home in Milwaukee a few minutes before CBS News This Morning broadcast a story we've been reporting on for a week. A story that featured Simon's estranged wife naming him as the man who shot a teenage couple to death. He jumps the volume up real high. And he is just mesmerized by the whole, the whole thing. I mean, it is like a moment that once in your life, you, as an investigator, it happens. And as soon as it was over with, I said, are you ready to tell me the truth now? I said, will you let me take your videotape statement? He says, let's do it. When 19-year-old Marilyn Green and her boyfriend were killed, her mother, Offie Lee Green, told police she last saw Marilyn with Simon's wife. Simon and his wife said detectives did interview them immediately after the 1982 killings, but mainly wanted help in linking Anthony Porter to the crime. They had this one particular picture, okay, and uh, it said his name was Anthony. And he said, ain't this the one that did it? Ain't this the one that did it? And that's the one he pointed to, and that's the one they sent to jail. They were in the house with the murder weapon, with the murder, and all I had to do was ask her who did it. But they were such a rush to nail Porter for this crime that they just couldn't bring themselves to ask the question. Scheduled to die last September for the 1982 murders of a young couple on Chicago's south side. Granted a last-ditch reprieve, his attorneys thought they could prove he was incompetent. They now believe he is innocent. Before I knew anything, you know, like I, I just pulled it up and started shooting. 
In a stunning development, another man, Al Story Simon, has confessed to the murders that have kept Anthony Porter yeah. behind bars. When you were firing these rounds, what were you thinking? I was thinking of trying to live how I have fear of my life. Simon claims he acted in self-defense. His admission is a remarkable development in an investigation initiated by a Northwestern University professor and a team of college students, lawyers, and investigators. Their first break came when they found Simon's wife, Inez, who last weekend revealed she witnessed the murders. It seemed like a bird had been lifted off my heart. Because I want to see an innocent person die for something they didn't do. It was private investigator Paul Cialino, a volunteer member of the Northwestern team, who got Simon's wow. videotaped confession yesterday morning. And Al Story was making, was denying that he was involved. But then, the television in the living room, tuned to CBS This Morning, began broadcasting a story about Inez Simon's confession. And I knew it's your story from last night. He, he went over to the TV and he turned it up real loud. And as soon as it was done, I asked him, I said, Al, are you ready to, you ready to stand up and be counted? And I said, can I take your videotape statement? And he says, let's do it. Before I knew anything, you know, like, I, I just blew it up and started shooting. Our story, Simon, claims the killings were an act of self-defense. Cook County prosecutors now say they will reopen Porter's case. And I'm Porter's well mother happy. is elated. Don't know how good it made me, make me feel to hear something like that. Although I did know my son was innocent out of all these years. But I said, it come to light. And Clara Porter hopes that new light will set her son free. Cynthia Bowers, CBS News, Chicago. And joining us from Chicago this morning is private investigator Paul Ciolino, who, as you just heard, helped break the Porter case. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Thalia. When you went to see Mr. Simon, had you thought about getting a confession from him? That was our purpose for going out and talking to him. It's, so you weren't surprised at all? Well, I was shocked, actually. I never thought he would confess. We were hopeful, but the chances of him doing that were so remote, they were uh, almost not worth going out there and talking to him. What do you think made him change his mind or made him make confession? He was weak in his denials during the interview, and it, at a certain point, your story came on, and he watched it, and it confirmed everything I had been telling him earlier in our conversation. And it just seemed at that moment he gave up, and he was ready to talk about the case and tell the truth. And we sat him down, and we videotaped him. Uh -huh. and, and I have to tell you, the critical moment was when he watched that CBS story. Well, had you planned on turning the television on? It was on, and I wasn't even paying attention to it. Really? He had it on to CBS, and okay. we caught it out of the corner of our eye. I seen the, in the mirror uh, the lead into your story, and I asked him to walk mm. over to the TV and watch the story, and he watched it. I mean, he was two feet off of a large screen TV, and he, he mm. was just mesmerized by the piece. Will you have any role in the reopening of this case, do you believe? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Will you have any role in the reopening of this case? Well, I hope so. I hope that Mr. Porter is uh, set free, and uh, he is finally uh, compensated for all the years mm. he's been imprisoned falsely. Mr. Cialino, thanks for joining us this morning with all the details. Thank you for having me.